move away from my video to the screen that shows you a question. That shows you a question. So you are told there, ABC Limited has determined that the reorder point, the reorder point is 50 units when there are no safety stocks. Its carrying cost per unit, carrying cost is the same as holding cost. Carrying cost is the same as holding cost. Its carrying cost per unit per year is shilling five. And the stock out cost is 40 per unit a customer misses. ABC Limited has experienced probability distribution for inventory demand during lead time, which is shown down there. So we have number of units versus probability. And then the requirement, if you scroll down there, the requirement, the requirement, ladies and gentlemen, required. The want as uh, required, they've given us that the optimal number of orders is six. What is the optimal level of safety stock? What is the optimal level of safety stock? If you had this particular question, I would have told you to underline the words safety stock. The words safety stock, because they want us to compute safety stock. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is quite a simple thing that I'll be able to do in three minutes. In three minutes. What I need, ladies and gentlemen, number one, I need what we call the current reorder point. The current reorder point. The current reorder point. I.e., the reorder point without safety stocks. You mentioned the current reorder point, i.e., the reorder point without safety stocks. Because you have to begin from the bench without any safety stock, without any safety stock. So the current reorder point in this question, if you go back to your question, you simply flip, you simply touch on that question, you'll be able to see up there at the very beginning where they have given us the reorder point to be 50 units. So we normally call this the current row, the current row. We normally call this the current what here? Row, the current row. The current row. Row for the other point. And then number two, the second requirement that I would need is what we call the DDLT. The DDLT. DDLT stands for demand during lead time. Demand during lead time. Right in full, it's demand during lead time, which happens to be probabilistic. So the demand during lead time, I can see those units. The demand during lead time, ladies and gentlemen, I can see 30. I can see 30. I can see 40. I can see 40. I can see 50. I can see 60. And then I can see what year? 70 versus their probabilities. Versus their probabilities. The probabilities we have there, we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. 0 0.25, and then lastly, we have 0 0.05. Of course, the total probabilities here must always add up to what? To one. The total probabilities must add up to one. Total probabilities must add up to one. So number one, I need the current row. Number two, I need the DDLT, demand during lead time. If you read the second paragraph there, they told us ABC Limited, has experienced probability distribution of inventory demand during lead time. During lead time. What you are calling the DDLT. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, the third step will be for me to develop what we call the ROP schedule. The ROP schedule. The ROP schedule. ROP schedule. The ROP schedule. So this ROP schedule, we have to be careful with it. This ROP schedule, we have to be very careful with it. The ROP schedule, the ROP schedule, the ROP schedule, we have our ROP schedule here. So we have our ROP schedule there. 
So this rope, I have to marry this particular requirement and this. Where is our current rope? Our current rope is 50. And this 50, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be somewhere here. I can see it is here. 50 is there. 50 is there. So what I will do, I'll come and uh, start with this, the current rope. I will start with the 50, leaving big, big spaces, 50, 60, big spaces in between. I'll tell you why I'm leaving those big spaces there. I'll tell you why I'm leaving those big spaces there. So we call that the current what here rope. Remember this rope is the same as what here our supply. The rope is the same as our supply. The rope is the same as our supply. Ah, great. Supply. What we are supplying during lead time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, what I will do, I'll come and give them the stock hours. Get a column there for stock what year? Stock hours. If we happen to understand this, we shall be very happy people. Understanding this is something that is very important. Number one, when I'm writing the rope, the rope schedule here, yeah? you can see I, I began with 50. And then I decided to move forward. When it comes to the rope schedule, for those of you who are saved, those of you who are here in this Christian uh, fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, you know that uh, in Christianity, it is forward ever. Backward ne? Backward never. So always, whenever you are getting the rope schedule, Start from the current drop, you move forward. So forward ever, backward, never. Please don't pick these other parameters like that. Don't pick them up. Don't pick them up. So we have our stock count. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to listen and listen to me very well. If I decide to store 50 units, and this is the demand, who is able to see situations when we shall run out of stock? We can only run out of stock if the demand is higher than the supply. If the demand is higher than the rope, rope is our supply, what we said to supply. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, if we decide to supply 50, then there is this possibility that 60 customers may come and we had only stocked 50. So I can see us turning away 10 customers. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, here, 10. The first stock out units there will be 10. 10. 10. And then there is this other possibility of us running out of stock. If they come 70 of them, we shall disappoint how many? We shall disappoint 20. We shall disappoint 20. We shall disappoint 20. We shall disappoint 20. Ah, very interesting. This is quite interesting. We are trying to look at what are those possibilities of running out of what? Of running out of stocks. If we decide to supply 50 here, if we decide to supply 50 here, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you have supplied. There are two possibilities of you running out of stocks. When they come more, when they come 60, I'll be able to disappoint 10. 10 will go away. They'll miss on whatever they had come to get. If they come 70 and I'll supply 50, then straight away, I'll disappoint 20. I'll disappoint 20. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. Forward ever, backward never. Of course, if they come 40, for example, and I'll stop 50, I'll be able to meet the needs of everyone. Actually, I'll be the one perishing with extras. If the commodity is perishable, I'll perish with extras. I'll perish with extras. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want us to, before I continue, who can give me the stock out units here? Who can give me the stock out units there? The stock out units there. Who can give us the stock out units there? If we decide to supply 60, what will be the stock out units? Philip is saying 10, that if we supply 60, there is only one chance of us disappointing customers when the demand is more. 
when the demand is 70 and we are supplied 60, so I can see ourselves in this case here, disappointing 10 only. What if, ladies and gentlemen, we decide, we decide to stock 70? If we decide to stock 70, if we decide to stock 70, what will happen? If we decide to stock zero, zero, thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back here. If we decide to stock 50, 50 like that, and they come 60, then we disappoint 10. But remember, we are not so sure of uh, disappointing exactly 10. That is why we have what probabilities. So come on, the first eventuality here, the first event, ladies and gentlemen, we are disappointing 10 with this probability. So multiply this with 0 0.25. Come here, here we were disappointing 20 with this probability of 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to understand understand this thing once and for all. That this particular stockout unit you've been able to give us are a stockout unit here per cycle, one cycle, one order, one order, one order. And of course, you're going to have in this case here as many cycles as the orders that we have. So like in the question, if you read the requirement, if you go to the handout, please click the handout there. If you go to the handout, you'll be able to see they will give you optimal number of orders. The optimal number of orders they're giving us there are how many? They are six. And that's where you get this book here, multiplying this, with the number of what here? Number of orders. To get the annual stockout cost. So these are annual stockout units which I need to come and convert, ladies and gentlemen, to cost. And fortunately, they have given us the stockout cost. If you could go at the beginning there, they gave us at the beginning there, they gave us the stockout cost per unit. They told us that eh, the stockout cost is 40 per unit a customer misses. Per unit a customer misses, we have in this case here 40, 40 there. 40, 40 like that. Ah, I've come to this. So what am I made to understand? That if I stock six, there is this possibility of me running out of what stocks here. There is this possibility of me running out of stocks and the us disappointing 10 people. But what is the probability of this event? Is zero point, so I'll come and multiply this with 0 0.05. And then ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to multiply. So many students have as well marked this MA for so long. So many students here will always forget the number of orders to annualize. Remember, in inventory management, we like annualization for a whole year, for a whole year. So times six times uh, the stockout cost per unit, which is what year, which is 40. Of course, for 70, you guys gave me what year? Z. You gave me Z. So ladies and gentlemen, come straight away and they give us these parameters. So give us these values. So give us these values. What do we have here? Somebody, the first one, I don't have a calculator. We take 10 times 0.25 times 6 times 40. 600. How about this one here? 240, thank you very much. Therefore, for the row of 50, what will be the total? Stock out cost. The total stock out cost will be this two. 600 plus 240, which gives us 800 what year? 840 like that. How about this one, somebody? 100 what year? 20 like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, I will go to the next step. The next step is the holding cost, holding cost of safety stock. Holding cost of safety stock. Holding cost of safety stock. Okay, so are you able to hear me? 
holding cost of safety stock. So ladies and gentlemen, holding cost of safety stock, what we have here, holding cost of safety stock. So first of all, come and give me the safety stocks. Now ladies and gentlemen, remember, they have given us the current row. Listen and listen to me very well. They have given us the current row. Current drop, as we shall be seeing later on, I'll be bringing this definition to you. The current drop is the same as the consumption during lead time. The current drop, this drop that you have here, is what we expect to consume during lead time. So if I expect to consume 50 during lead time, and then I supply 50 exactly, then here there is no safety stock. I want you to listen and listen to me very well. Come to the second scenario. The second scenario of supply, the how many? 60. Knowing very well that the consumption is going to be 50. The consumption is going to be 50. So it means that there is a buffer there. There's some stock units that I've ordered which I will not be using. Which I'll not be using. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we'll talk over 60 minus 50. So, 60 minus 50, that gives us what here? 10. So what are we doing for us to be able to get these safety stocks? It's quite easy. For us to get these safety stocks, ladies and gentlemen, what you are doing is to take the lowest figure that we have here. And then you knock it out of the figure that we have, like now 50 minus 50. Here we have 60 minus 50, which gives us 10. Last we have 70 minus what here? 50, which gives us 20 like that. I know as I normally do the first example, I may lose out on some of you. But at the end of the day, everyone will be comfortable because this is an area that rarely misses in our exams, this safety stock. Now remember, what they want us to do at the end of the day is to give them the cost of holding the safety stock. So it is a holding cost of safety stock. Safety stock. Now the question is, do we have the HC? What is HC? Are they given as HC in the question? In this question, do we have a HC? HC is holding cost. Can somebody give me the comment there? Are you able to see the holding cost? Holding cost. It's on top there. It's on top there. Just flip through. Go to holding cost. I can see somebody saying, uh, what figure there? Five, eh? The holding cost is five. So come and multiply this with five, five, and then five like that. I know it's quite early in the morning. You'll get some student there saying this is 50. <laughs> it's quite early in the morning. Zero multiplied by anything will always give us what here? Zero. And then we have 10 by 5. That will give us what here? 50. And then lastly, we have 20 by 50. 20 by 5, I mean, giving us what here? 100. Giving us 100. Giving us 100. Giving us 100. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do me a favor, come and give us the total cost. That is the last column. The last column. So total cost, what shall we do to get total cost? We shall be taking the stock out cost, stock out cost, stock out cost, plus the holding cost. So like 840 plus zero, that gives us 800 watt here, 840. And then we have uh, 120 plus 50, giving us 100 watt here, 70. And then the last one will be zero plus 100, giving us what here? 100, giving us 100. Giving us 100. So it is on the basis of the total cost that we shall make a decision. It is on the basis of this total cost that we shall make a decision. Our work as management accountants is to minimize cost. Is to minimize cost. So what is the minimum cost? The minimum cost among us three is this 100. So then you should be able to advise them on the basis of the minimum cost. So on the basis of the minimum cost, I can see what we call the optimal row. So we have here the optimal row. The optimal row. What do we have as our optimal reorder point? The optimal row. The optimal row, ladies and gentlemen, is that row which corresponds to the lowest cost. If you look at the row here, the optimal one then will be this 70. 
optimal rope. Everything about these 100 is best. Everything about these 100, the lowest cost is used. Everything about these 100 is used. So then the first thing should be good with the optimal rope. And then we have the optimal safety stock. So we have here the optimal, the optimal safety stock. So the optimal safety stock, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? Optimal safety stock. Optimal safety stock, I can see my safety stocks are here. It is this 20. Optimal safety stock is 20 units like that. And you have answered your examiner. You have answered your examiner. So what I will do is to assume that all of us have not understood anything at all and then do another question, which is the next question on this screen, which is a November 2017 question number five. November 2017 question number five. We are told the Trans Limited supplies a product branded BBG. BBG. Question. BBG. Although the annual demand for BBG is high, it varies considerably. The demand during, they have given me the DDLT. I like that area of DDLT. An examiner who gives me DDLT is a good example. And the associated probabilities are as follows. So please look at that table there. Yeah, you can just take it up. So they've given us demand during lead time. And then they have given us additional information. You can see the number of orders must always be given. Number of orders must always be given. They have given me the ordering cost per ordering cost per order amount to 6,000. They have also given me the carrying cost which we said is equivalent to holding cost of how much? A thousand. The estimated stockout cost has been given as 5,000 per unit. The reorder point, which is also known as the current drop, is 850. The lead time is 12 working days. And then we are required there to advise the management of Trans Limited on the amount of safety stock, please underline for me safety stock, to be maintained and then determine the probability of stock out. So ladies and gentlemen, I've got no war with anybody. The only thing that I would want you to do for me this morning as we wind up on our class is to try. Let's see whether we have any students who can try giving us this rope schedule. Just try your best. In five minutes, we see whether you can construct the rope schedule from this particular table, that table that you're seeing there, from the DDLT from the DDLT, just make sure that the table, yes. The DDLT, from the DDLT, what do we have there? Try as much as possible to construct that table. It's quite lengthy.
let's see where they are finished. So the most important there, I think, is to know where we're going to begin our table from. They've told us that the current rope is how many units? Just call it the current rope, the current reorder point from note number five is 850. So from my table there, I will begin with 850. And ensure that you leave some spaces. So we have 850, 850. The next one, uh, the next one after 850 is, uh, the next one after 850 is uh, 900. I don't know whether you're able to see, uh, let me, I don't know whether you're able to see these figures on the phone, on the side, I'm writing here. On the phone, are you able to see these figures? Or well, they are off the camera. On well, the camera, thank you very much. So we have 850, 900. The next one will be what year? 950. 950. After 950, the next one will be a thousand. A thousand. And then after that, we have uh, 1000. What year? 1050, I mean. 1050. And then lastly, we have 1,100. Quite lengthy. This is a very good one. So this is what we call our raw schedule, which is the same as our supply. The same as our supply. Now from there, I'll come and create a column for stockouts. So we have here stockouts. Stockouts. Remember, they must be annualized. By multiplying it with, yes, number of units, number of orders are made. So we come here. We are asking ourselves from that table, if in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to supply 850, what are those possibilities of us running out of stocks? Remember, we have our 850. From there, we have 900. From there, we have uh, 950, 1,000. 1,050, 1,100. Could you kindly give me the probabilities? So probabilities, what do we have here? 0 point, 0 0.05. I have for 850, 0 0.05. Uh, 0 0.05, the same. I have the next one is 0 point, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.04. And then we have uh, 0 point, 0 0.03. And then we have 0 point, uh, zero 03, thank you very much. And lastly, zero 0.02, zero thank you very much. So we are trying to look at, ladies and gentlemen, those chances of us disappointing our customers. If I place an order of 850, I can only disappoint these people when they are more than the supply. So if they come 900, I will disappoint 50. So you have to write very small figures, 50, with what probability? 0 0.05. And then we have this other possible disappointment, 100 times 0 0.04. And then if they come 1,000, I'll disappoint 150, 150 times 0 0.03. And then we have, if they come 1050, I'll disappoint 200 times 0 0.03 again. And then if they come 1,100, I'll disappoint 250 times 0 0.02, like that. So you got the next one, 900. 900, ladies and gentlemen, if we stock 900, 900 here, what are those possibilities of disappointing these people? So you can see here, if I stock 900, if they come 950, I will disappoint 50. So 50 times what probability there? 50 times 0 0.04. If they come, ladies and gentlemen, 1,000, and at 900 for them, I'll disappoint 100. So we have 100 times 100 times 0 0.03, times 0 0.03. And then if they come 1050, I will disappoint, in this case here, 100, what year? 50 times 0 0.03 again. And then if they come 1100, I will disappoint 200 times 0 0.02. So you got the next one. The next one is where we stock 950. 
if we stock 950, ladies and gentlemen, if we stock 950, ladies and gentlemen, possibilities of uh, us disappointing. Here I can see ourselves disappointing 50. They come a thousand. So I will disappoint 50 will go home times uh, 0 0.03. If they come 1050, I'll disappoint 100. So 100 times 0 0.03. If they come 1100, I'll disappoint 150 times 0 0.02. Aha, uh -huh. from there we go to a thousand. What if, remember it's a what if analysis. What if we stock a thousand and they come 1050, so it will be 50 times 50 times 0 0.03, 50 times 0 0.03. Then we have in this case here 100 times 0 0.02 like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we go 1050. If we have 1050 stocked, 1050 stocked, there is only one possibility of a turning away customers. That is if they come 50 times what probability 0 0.02, like that. If they come 1,100 of them, there is no possibility of us ever disappointing any customer. So there are two important parameters that I must include here for us to be able to get all the maps. What parameters are these? Which values have we, or rather must we, include here? Which values must we include there? Which values must never forget the two values? We have, ladies and gentlemen, we have number one, the stock out cost per unit. Has this examiner given us the stock out cost per unit? Yeah, note number four, estimated stock out cost per unit is 5,000. So let's say here yeah, times 5,000, times 5,000, times 5,000, times 5,000. Each one of them, each one of them each one of them. Each one of them. This one we can say times 5,000, although we know that uh, zero multiplied by anything is always zero. So come again, please never forget. So many students will do it all the way up to here, but many of them will always forget to multiply this with the number of uh, orders in a year. So the number of orders in a year, what do we have here, number of orders in a year? They have given us in this question, they have given us a number of orders in a year. How many of them? Five orders are you need. So times five, 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 Go slowly, give us the figures. Go slowly, give us the figures. And really, my interest is in the total cost. You can just get them individually and then you add them for us. I'll be a happy man. I'll be a happy man. I only want you to give me the total cost for the first one. Even for your case, try to use different uh, uh, ink pens. So total cost, give me total cost there, give me the total cost here, total cost there, total cost there, total cost. That is in terms of what your stock out cost. Stock out cost. In terms of stock out cost. In terms of stock out cost. In terms of stock out cost. What do we have? want to be given the total cost, the total cost, the total cost, the total cost, total stock out cost. Is there somebody who has been able to, I know it's quite lengthy, the first one. Actually, if it was not uh, for time limitation, I'm not a push to you, I wanted you to do the whole of it. Now we have time limitation.
Irene. Eh? Irene says the total cost of the first drop is 550,000. I'm only looking for someone to second her. Someone else getting 550. Will Wilfred? Winnie, Winnie 550,000. Thank you very much. So the total uh, stock out cost for ROP 850 has been confirmed. How about ROP 900? The total cost of ROP 900. Total cost of ROP 900. Total cost for ROP 900. Total cost for up nine hundred. Anyone responding? Not yet. So we give them time. Please, once you finish, respond very first. Three eighty-seven, five hundred. So somebody is giving me a figure of three eighty-seven, five hundred. Three eighty-seven, five hundred. Is that correct? Someone else to second her or him? I know that would be correct because as we go along, we expect the stock out cost to reduce because we are increasing the safety stock. Is that answer correct? I want somebody to second uh, uh, this great student who was able to get 387,500. Catherine got the same figure. Thank you very much, Catherine has been able to confirm. So let us now go to the third row of 950 and ascertain the total cost. And ascertain the total cost. Ascertain the total cost. One eighty seven, five hundred. One eighty seven, five hundred. Eh? From two. Uh, how about the next one? Total cost for the next one. Total cost for the next one. There's a person who has got an answer there. Eighty. Five hundred. Total cost for a thousand. I'm being told here by a great student. Is it a seven five hundred? So could we have someone else seconding the student here? Thank you very much. So the last one, the last one, because I know the very last day is zero. Total cost here will be equal to what here somebody ten, of ten fifty. Twenty five thousand. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, having gotten that, we know that our second last column is the holding cost. Mention their holding cost. Holding cost of safety stock. 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 So first of all, we have to get the safety stocks. The safety stocks. Rob 2, there is a mistake, eh? It's supposed to be 337. Please confirm. I don't have a calculator. I'm told here by some student. Is it one or two? Three. So it's supposed to be 337, 500. 
visitors, all of us agree, like seven, they have to be correct. Wingy wape. So come and give us the uh, uh, safety stocks. How do we get safety stocks? You simply work with this lower figure as a benchmark. So lower figure as a benchmark, you take uh, the, the, the rope that you have minus the benchmark 850. So the first one will be 850 minus 850, which is zero. The second one here will be 900 minus 850, which is 50. The third one will be 950 minus 850. All of them is subtract 850 from them. So 950 minus 850, that gives us 100. The next one will be 1,000 minus 850, which gives us 150. Then we have 1050 minus 850, which gives us 200. Then we have 1100 minus 850, which gives us 250 times, 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 times. So from there, what I need to see will be the holding cost per unit. Has the examiner given us the holding cost for each unit? Uh huh. So holding cost, holding cost per unit in the question. Are you able to see the holding cost per unit? The holding cost per unit they have given us, the holding cost, which is the same as carrying cost, is a thousand. So multiply this with a thousand. Quite an interesting figure. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So come and give this figure zero. We have here 50,000. Then we have here what here? 100,000. Then 150,000. 200,000. And then lastly, we have 250,000. So then the last thing that you need to do is to come and add the two costs. You add the two costs for you to give us the total inventory cost. Add the two costs for you to come and give us the total inventory cost. So give us the total cost now. You add the two. Like now we have 550 plus zero, giving us 550,000. Uh-huh. And then we have a 337,500 plus 50, plus 50,000. That will give us 387,500. 387,500. Then we have 187,500 plus 100,000. That will give us 287,500. Then we have 150 plus this, which will give us what figure sample? You don't want to think so much in the morning. You don't want to think so much in the morning. That will give us 200 what here? 37? 237. Please confirm. 237,500. And then, ladies and gentlemen, go to the next one, 200 plus this 25. That will give us what year? 225,000. 225,000. And then, lastly, we have 200 what year? 50,000. 250,000. Thank you very much. So, of course, our aim is to minimize this. Always work with the minimum cost. So, the minimum cost is this 225,000. The minimum cost is 225,000. So if the minimum cost is 225,000, I want a good student to give me two things. I want a good student to give me two things. To give me the optimal rope and the optimal safety stock. The optimal rope and the optimal safety stock. The optimal rope and the optimal safety stock. Some will talk to us this morning as we wind up this class. Talk to us, talk to us. The optimal safety stop and the optimal drop. Is there somebody who is able to tell us the optimal drop there? Not yet. So I want two things. Optimal drop. Optimal drop from some great student. What is his or her name? Hassan. 
Optimal ROP, Hassan is saying that optimal ROP is 1050. Yes, I agree with this because the ROP, which corresponds to this best figure, lowest cost, is 1050. How about the optimal safety stock? Optimal safety stock. So the optimal safety stock will be equal to what? Somebody help me out there. Gaddafi, the optimal safety stock, I'm being told, 250 or 200? 200. Because we are picking it from this column here. 200. This one here. 200. So the optimal safety stock is 200. Thank you very much. It's 200. The optimal safety stock is 200. Quite heavy, but trust you me, the moment we do a third question, this is the kind of question that will always be starting with in your exam. That will always be starting with in your exam. So then you have been able to make a recommendation over there. So let us now go to the last question. The last question, ladies and gentlemen, what do they want us to give them? Last question, what do they want us to give them? The last question, they want us to give them the probability of a stock out. The probability of a stock out. Please take me back to the table there. Take me back to the table there. So remember we have our probabilities. All the way from 600, you can see. From 600 up to 1100. They've given us so many probabilities, 600, all the way up to 1,100. I can see the probabilities. The probabilities, probabilities for 600, we have 0 0.25. For 1,100, the last one is 0 0.02. Eh? The last one, 0 0.02. And then we have 1050. Then we have 1050. 1050. 1050, ladies and gentlemen, 1050. Probability is 0 0.03, 0 0.03 like that. I don't want to copy everything. Remember, how many units have we decided to work with? We've said we are going to stock 1050. So we're going to stock 1050 here. So then they're asking us, what is the probability of running out of stock? We can only run out of stock if demand exists. What we have decided to stock. Ourselves from our optimality analysis, we decided to stock 1050, 1050. And we can only run out of stock if we have this number coming, not backward. Remember, like I told you in salvation, forward ever, backward never. We are looking forward, forward. So here, ladies and gentlemen, the probability of running out of stock, probability of out of stock, probability of out of stock is the same as probability 1100 units, which is the same as what here, 0 0.02 like that. Probability of this. The probability of that. What if we had another? What if we had another one like 1150, 0 0.01? So, probability of running out of stock is probability of getting 1100 or probability of getting 1150. So, then what I would have done is to add the two. Because it's probability of this or probability of this. Or means add. Or means you add. Or means you add. Or means you add. All means you have. Very good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to see whether there are students uh, who have really followed uh, what we have been talking about this morning. So, number one, I would want to throw to you a simple question, a simple question which can easily be brought in, which can easily be brought in under emerging issues. Emerging issues. Who can give us two characteristics of a just-in-time system? Two characteristics, only two characteristics of just-in-time system. Only two characteristics of just-in-time system question or the last pattern unfortunately have wrapped uh, so we had here quantity we had 600 
we had 1050, we had 1100, we have probability. This one here is zero point. Just take it back and take. Zero point two five. You know, there are others in between. Then we have 1050. 1050 is zero point zero three. And then we have 1100, which is zero point what here? Zero two. So remember from the big table that we did, we decided to settle on this quantity. We said we are going to supply. Our supply is 1050. And then they are asking us, if you supply 1050, what is that probability that you are going to run out of stock? What is that probability that you're going to disappoint customers? So in Jokia, we can only disappoint customers if the demand will exceed what you have supplied. And we have only one situation when the demand is more than the 1050, when this demand is 1100. So therefore, the probability of running out of stock, of running out of stock given the arrangement that we have, will be the probability of what year 1100 units being demanded, which will be equal to what year 0 0.02 like that. 0 0.02. So, Jokia, I don't know whether we are together here. It's a simple question. You know, the students normally, it's a simple thing. We have decided to stock 1050. What is that probability of you running out of stock? You can only be said to run out of stock if your demand is higher. So, you look for all those higher demands. The higher demands. You look for all those higher demands like that. So, probability here should be equal to 0 0.02. Thank you. So we are talking about just in time from your section two. Have ever seen this being asked in school five? What are the two key characteristics of just in time? No storage cost. The very best way of uh, you mentioning that particular point is that just in time is a, a zero inventory model. Is a zero inventory model. So there are no raw materials, no work in progress, no stocks of finished goods, nothing. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, JIT is a TQM. It's a total quality management system. It's a total quality management system. It's a total quality management system. It doesn't believe in defects, so zero defects. And that is why you will get these people of Toyota. When you're buying a vehicle from them, from them, if there is any defect, any defect, they'll always bring it to your attention. Tell you, this is the defect that is a dent here. And because of this dent, we are knocking off a few dollars from your buying price. And in the event, like we have seen Toyota Japan doing, like now there is this time, there are vehicles, a big number of vehicles that are produced had a problem with airbags, airbags. What they did globally, they recalled all those what here model of vehicles. All of them were recalled now. Why? Because Toyota Japan is applying the JIT model, the JIT model, which is a, a zero defects model. And if there is any defect, you are required to make good yourself. Good yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how about this one? Which so many students will always take it to be simple, but they go to an exam and get it. Without making reference to any place up there where you wrote, could you kindly give us four assumptions of EOQ? Four assumptions of EOQ. Four assumptions of EOQ. Four assumptions of EOQ. No discounts, uh -huh. purchase cost only in advance and will remain constant. That is okay. Number two, demand is known and will remain constant. No shortages. Mm -hmm. That we have already seen it. Uh -huh. Purchase cost constant. That is the same as that. Uh, no discounts. Lead time is known. Lead time is known, yes. Lead time is known. 
replenishment is in equal batches and what here instantane instantaneous there are others that you guys are not able to pick very fast which i would expect you anytime you're asked about the formula of eoq remember it is a square root of two dco over what here hc two dco over hc so out of this i should be able to see three three assumptions but demand is not in advance and remains constant the cost per order which i never had anybody here mention about it cost per order is not in advance and will remain constant and then we have the holding cost per unit per annum is on advance and will remain what here? Constant. And will remain constant. And will remain constant. Out of this, I should be able now to get the three. And then I look for others from now. Uh, the other uh, points here. Very good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the last question for us today. They have given us usage. Usage. Usage per month. Usage per month is 200. Then they have given us production, annual production. Annual production, annual production is 4,800. 4,800. Right? Holding cost is 10. CS, CS is 1,000. CS is 1,000. And then they want us to give them the EBQ. They want us to give them the EBQ. EBQ. They want us to give them the EBQ. So please try to give us this. This is our parting shot for today. Has gotten right. The different, eh? Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. This production rate is for a whole year, 
right? So you must ensure that the usage and the production normally reflect the same, same, same period. So you can decide to take this to be annual, eh? just like this one. So you can say usage per month. So per annum, it will be usage per annum. Usage per annum will be 200 times 12, which will end up giving us what year 2400. And remember, this will be the same as what year our demand. This will be the same as our demand. And if that is the case, thank you very much for trying. We know that our EBQ, EBQ equals square root of 2 DCO over HC, which will be square root of 2 times annual demand, which is the same as annual usage. Times, uh, this is not CO, this is CS, sorry. See, it's EBQ. Even down here, we must talk of 1 minus U over P. It's EBQ. So 2 times 2,400 times CS, which is 1,000, all over HC, which is 10, times 1 minus 2,400 over 4,800, yes. Which will end up giving us what figure? Let's see who got this correct. Let's see who got this correct. Somebody from what I have, the workings that I have here, could you kindly give us, could you kindly give us the proper, correct figure, the correct figure there to be equal to what here, somebody? I have from who? According to Joki, it's nine, seven, nine. Point eight. Is there somebody who had gotten this figure earlier on? Vivian had gotten it before I did it. Or oh, earlier, earlier on. <laughs> okay, even Philip, eh? Those students deserve a gift. And then I'd also gotten it, eh? Or oh, they're getting it now. Earlier, earlier, earlier. And I want to believe when some of them decided to divide this by 12. And you'll end up getting what here? Yeah, the same answer. Ladies and gentlemen, because I know most of you are rushing to your workplaces, I take this opportunity to thank you so much for the sacrifice you've made. So please encourage other students in the group to be attending these early morning classes. So go to your workplaces, become productive. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you.